the 17th of January here at uh, a little after one o'clock. So if everyone's had a opportunity to see the agenda, I would move that we approve it. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Right. Any public comments on that agenda? Okay. Moving along, Kelly. Election of officers. As required in the bylaws, the election of officers shall occur at the first meeting of each calendar year, and officers shall take office upon selection and shall hold offices for a term of one year. So do we have any nominations for the position of chair? Well, I've been sitting here for three years in this position. And doing a heck of a job. And I thought maybe it was time we had a chair. Maybe we should have a chairperson. Instead of a chair? Instead of a chairman, yes. I'd like to nominate Mary Lou right there. I was going to nominate George Becker. Still can. Okay, I nominate George Becker. I need another year under my belt. Can somebody second one of those? Do we need to second the nomination? We, yes, we do need to support. Mm -hmm. I support them both. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> the next one is the vice chair. So, I mean, there's enough to go around, but. Um, <laughs> well, don't we, shouldn't we But we could that? vote. I mean, you could, you could support and then we could vote and see who. I think we got whoever isn't successful at the first vote probably gets the second vote. I'm already the vice chair. Well, you might go, you should. You're both willing to see each one to serve. Okay. I second him. Okay. We should vote. Okay. So um, we will, <laughs> I, have <to> think, <laughs> I have to think how to do it. We want to vote on the first nomination or are we voting? How would you like me to handle it? I think the way I've seen it happen in the past with Heather is then since you have more than one nomination, you call individually and they vote for one of the two. Okay. Okay, Tom Swedenborg. Who are you voting for as chair? I will vote for George. Jeff McCula. I will vote for George. George Becker. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lou Mydell. George Becker. Okay. George um, received the nominations, um, and all were in favor of that, so we're all set with that. And then for the position of vice chair. I would nominate Mary Lou. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mary Lou? as vice chair. So George, you now take control of the meeting. Well, then we'll have to have the approval of the minutes. I believe that's next. Does everyone have to them? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes of October 18th as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Moving on to unfinished business, the Marina marketing plan will come up next. I think Mark is here with the presentation for this. Um, well, I don't really have anything other than, you know, we did get plenty of photography and video, so we do have all that in the can and able to use. Um, I did have a good conversation with Sammy from the CVB. Jeff and I had talked about, you know, prospectively, you know, their normal operating relationship is like with the room tax. And I kind of proposed, well, could there be a dock tax? And she said it really isn't 
that doesn't really work that way. So I guess she's open to whatever we would bring to her prospectively to do. Um, and maybe today I'll have some task items that I can come back to you with some more details on. Um, yeah, so the conversation you know, that we had when Mark was here before was to do the full marketing plan um, exceeds what we can, what our funding is available today. Um, so we proceeded with getting the imagery and the, and the video and pictures and so forth so that we had that stuff ready for the next phase, which is to get out and actually do the marketing. Um, we had $2,000 budgeted in the current Marina Fund for marketing. We've expended that already, so I don't have funds left over, but I had suggested that um, maybe we could um, use some of the city's ARPA funds or um, partner with the CVB to see, because they do a lot of that marketing. And um, I haven't got anywhere with the ARPA funds. Um, so Mark had a conversation to see, the CVB, their, their mission is to put heads in beds, essentially. So uh, they get a room tax every time somebody rents a hotel room in Manistee, if that facility is is a partner with the CVB then that's how they get funded and then they go out and do more marketing to bring people to the area right. and it kind of evolves <clears throat> and so Mark and I had a side conversation that even though the marina doesn't directly support people staying in hotels it is a, a wonderful gateway to the community that then would drive people to return you know in different parts of the year and so forth yeah. So that's kind of how we... Yeah, and that. so I, and Jeff and I did some further, um, we had pretty couple discussions actually, and we spoke when I was here last time about the loopers. And really this summer was profound to me how many loopers there were, and actually a couple of the days we were down filming, I mean, you can attest to the number. And you know, they stand, they're obvious, right? And then there were quite a few that I saw over the summer just portaged in Manistee Lake for the night, you know, that... <laughs> Um, so there, I did some research, and there is uh, the America's Great Lakes Cruisers Association, and it's a fairly large, it's out of North Carolina, and they have uh, four levels of membership, and I'm just using this as an example because, again, everything is going to be predicated on, you know, what type of budget we have and what, what are the priorities. You know, you may decide your priorities are to have an online payment system to be able to have payments taken online you know, more than, you know, a video edited or whatever the case may be. But um, I think the loop community would be a great community to target because um, just like we talked about, and I don't know if I was here before or after I was up in Frankfurt. I think it was after. It was but, after. You know, the number of boats when they leave that Frankfurt Harbor and the heading they're taking, they are not coming to Manistee. They are, they're going around Point Sable. And I think that the loopers are, you know, they're, that doesn't matter to them because they like these out of the way places. They, they like the undiscovered coves and the, the marinas that are in the quiet areas. So, and they're not in any hurry, you know, they just know they can get fuel and get provisions and, and, and keep on their trip. So depending on where we're at, you know, with the scope of a plan, I would, I would recommend doing this. They have lots of different ways that you can engage on their website, social media, that to me seems like a pretty obvious target market and this would be a nice vehicle to reach that target market otherwise if we look at marketing around the ports around michigan we would run out of money real quick and where would where would we even aim our gun you would have to try to maybe do a handful of them so you know it really just kind of comes down from a strategic standpoint what do we want to do how do we get there if there's seven things on the list and we can do three what are those three things and you know, it just, it just, you know, like everything, it just comes down to resources. So what do you think the most effective way of reaching that group would be? Well, they've got, you know, they've got a, a $625 a year. That's kind of the entry level. And you get, you know, they, they've got it all quantified here. And there's actually a, a pretty fair amount of value in it. Uh, then it goes up to 995 a year. And then you get into like 2910 grand a year, like if you were engaging in their trade show and whatnot. We wouldn't. We wouldn't need to go there I would so, think so you actually become a member you become a member you a member slash sponsor and then like you know you get banner ads on their website you get links you get social media posts you get 
to post in their discussion forum, if you've got a video to provide them. You know, there's a, there's a lot of ways, and I would think we know that people taking the loop do a lot of research, and I would think this would be, I mean, I found it pretty easily. I would think anybody making the loop would find it equally as easy. And, you know, the thing is, is they're coming and going. You know, some people are going one way and other, and I just, to me, it was just obvious last year that that would make a lot of sense to target, especially if you're looking at transient, you know, generating the transient um, revenue. You said um, that's the Great Lakes Cruisers? It's called the Great Lakes Loop Cruisers Association. And I've actually reached out to the lady and she sent me their little, um, you know, basically their membership booklet. Um, I can send the, the link to Jeff if you'd like me to and he can share it with you. But they've got a podcast that you can sponsor. They've got, you know, all kinds of different ways to reach their, their audience. And, you know, I think for the buy-in, you know, it's not a... It's not a $10,000 investment. You, know, you could get in for 600 to to $1,000, you could get in on it. And then, again, it would just be providing them with whatever assets they would need to, you know, to tell our story. Um, but I, you know, and again, I'm all ears with Katie, too, because she's the one getting the feedback from people. So I don't pretend to know everything, and I, you know, I just know what I saw, <laughs> you know, and I saw a lot of loopers. And I don't know where else we would target. I don't know. You know, would it be Grand Haven? Would it be, you know, the other side? Would it be Wisconsin? You know, where would we target if we were to start, you know, putting pins on a map? Um, but I'm interested what you think, you know. I mean, well, the loopers that we talked to, I mean, I talked to most, most of the people that came in. And due to the COVID year, they were, they weren't able to travel. So I think it was an off year. Maybe there were more than there would have normally been? Yes, or, okay. yes, many more. Okay. So, have to one year isn't a trend. Right, right, right. Um, yes, we wait and see. This year, but I know they they do they they all have their own blogs and they kind of log into you know log in and post to each other where they stay and they're moving. So if one state of Manistee has had an excellent experience, then they're going to post on their site to the voters that they just met in Frankfurt and they're on their way. Yeah, kind of how it goes. So is is there a start or stop point for this? Wherever you're at, so if you live in Manistee, yeah, it's Manistee. If it's uh, Key West, it's Key. You know, it's and people go both ways because you can. You know, right. you can go. You said that's from North Carolina. That's just where they're based. You know, that's so. So, okay, so that's just an organization and where they're kind of. Yeah, they've got them. like if you look at that, their logo. Kind of shows, their members, each individual shows, member of you know, that organization. Oh, I see. You know, so they're, they're doing they're the mis 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 true. That's the true loop. Wow. Yeah. Actually, just talked to a guy a couple weeks ago that hit the loop this past summer, mm -hmm. and he said the scariest part was the Mississippi because of the low water mm -hmm. and how that congested the barge traffic to the center of the channel. Mm -hmm. And he said they couldn't wait to get out of the Mississippi River. He said other than that, it was great, you know. So, you know, again, this is just an example. I'm not saying yeah. it, you know. Well, I think it makes sense because I, I think that just like Katie said, everybody who, ha who has a good experience is going to, you guys, have, you vote, you talk to other voters, mm -hmm. you share your good experiences, you're bad. But, um, and this is a year after year after year, so it would be, I think it'd be good to get into that. My only concern is timing and cash flow. Right. Right now, to have an impact on this upcoming summer's market or season, we need to do the marketing now but we don't have the funds available. So the reason why I was asking is, you know, we really have that July through early September is the is the heart of the season. And, you know, our next budget doesn't go into effect till July 1st. Mm -hmm. So is that too late in the season? Do we need to? Well, I can, you know, I don't know how, um, you know, like for example, you can start when you can start you know i mean it's it's that simple uh again we have the assets we have so we you know we we at least have a foundation to you know put out there yeah. it's going to take a little bit more to put those into a you know edited usable format um and at a minimum that should be on the city's website you know one of the things we talked about prior was your benefit of not having to have your own website you're in the manistee arena you go right to the city um, I don't know if you know, Kelly, could the city take payments? Could, do you do online payments through any of your other offices? 
Um, we don't. So I don't know how important that is. Katie, do you get, is that a big deal or doesn't seem to be they're just putting their plastic out and they don't have to be. They book they, online. Or they, they can, so. yeah, they can, they can yeah, book so. online, but they don't have to pay online. So um, maybe, so that's not a concern then, you know. Um, but well, what, what I was just thinking is maybe um, in our staff meeting this morning, Kelly's working on updating our website. Mm -hmm. Maybe as part of that effort, we use some of these new images and um, we let Katie look at, you know, maybe how we could. You could definitely tell your story a little better and you've got the assets. At least if they're looking ahead at what ports are ahead, we can refresh mm -hmm. our message online. That doesn't cost anything today. It's using what we already purchased. And quite frankly, we need to drive more business to make more revenues to be able to then invest more in marketing and continue that cycle. People are planning now. Oh, they totally are. The other thing too would be making sure that um, on that page, just because of you know that's what we're talking about, that the search engine is optimized so that the words that we want, like we have those words optimized so that as people are searching for you know, loop destinations, loop marinas, west marinas on the west coast of Michigan, whatever those phrases are, that we're able to ensure that people can find what they're looking for. And even on our, like on our website, I noticed that, like if you click on our website, it will show, like the marina's not listed, I think I emailed Kelly about that a few months ago, but the marina's not listed, so it's under par, so I mean, there's a few channels that you go through, which right. might be a little discouraging to some. It, it, I mean, it is, but. Maybe there's a way it can be more visible yeah. or something. I don't know. Because I think a, a marina is a marina, and our marina is a park. Yeah. But right. it's a marina right. first in the relationship to how we market right. it. You know. Right, and then I and they do pay on a state website for the reservation, okay. so that already happens, and okay. I do believe we have a link to that. Okay. But mm -hmm. so there's probably just some little tweaks we can make that would help that. The other thing too, I know we had a discussion, Jeff. That you were the city was trying to rein in their Facebook page. I would recommend getting a Manistee Marina Facebook page, um, just because so many people operate in that venue. Um, I don't know, you know what that would take relative to your bigger policy, but I could definitely see there being an exception made for the marina because you are, you know, of such an obvious standalone entity. The enterprise. It is. And the other thing is that Google doesn't like, and again, we're not, we're not doing a big search engine campaign, but Google likes when you have social media attached to your website. And it just, it gives you another venue to put out there what's going on and it's just another way to build engagement with people that right now doesn't exist so and it takes time to build it up if, especially if you're starting you know from zero it, it takes time to build up that that following but well we know. did have one and it has been so it's still archived and we I mean that's a discussion we can have okay so just that was just a you know kind of, but you know like you touched on it the experience the guest experience having continuity and management doesn't cost you anything just you just got to think about it and and pull that through um, that you have a hundred percent control over how the guest is, is treated when they come how clean the facility is all of those things are huge um, and don't cost anything so um, I guess I'm at your pleasure here I don't know what you know what's next um, you know I can scale whatever I can scale whatever you need me to scale but I can't scale it to zero yeah and uh, the cruising society they have a magazine that looks like yep so we would advertise on it or just so i can go down i mean i can i actually have two copies here i can so like you know you get a logo and link in their sponsored directory oh, okay. banner ad rotation classified ad discussion forum interactive map listing if we've got an event so we can put our city events in there you know i, I would think um, especially the Hops and Props, Horse yeah. Festival, you know, those are all pertinent. Great Loop newsletter, um, additional ads, if we wanted to do ads, it'd be at a discounted rate. We'd get an article in the, in, in the link. I don't know that that's a printed magazine as much as it is an online forum, which is fine because that's how people are going to get it. Introductory write-up, um, social media engagement, sponsored directory listing, logo and message in the monthly <coughs> emails. 
Um, signage at the exhibit space, again, I don't envision that happening. But welcome bags, if we had, you know, Manistee Trinket, we wanted to put in their welcome bag. Um, and again, I assume, I know people do a year of research before they make these trips. Yeah. And they go to shows and they talk to other voters. Because it's, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a serious trip. It's oh, fun, yeah. but it's, it's also very serious. Oh, yeah, you know? I've got a friend that's doing So, yeah, and then they've got, you know, again, you know, at the level that we're buying in, we wouldn't, you know, they've you've got commercials in their podcast. I mean, there's just a, a lot of ways to engage with it, so. You know, if, if nothing else, I mean, the 625 or the 995, um, you know, in a little bit of my time to put some stuff together, I think would be a, a start. I don't want to get over our skis on it because if you're going to wait and then have a, a budget that's maybe a little bit more significant. But in July, you know, we've got four or five months that we haven't, you know, done anything. So at least if we did this, we would have something out there in advance, and then I would assume we, this would be something we would want to do, you know, at least for three to five years. I mean, I would think if you bought into a program like this, you want to you want to stay there until you knew for sure that it wasn't working. Um, it, it's interesting that you brought up COVID because I guess I wouldn't have thought of that. I just thought, oh, all these baby boomers <laughs> finally retired and no, bought their boat. No, or... I wish. <laughs> but it does. It... I didn't know either until someone told me. So right. I... But it was, you, oh. I can't, that was the, most I've ever seen. the number of boats that were just in Manistee late on the weekend sometimes was profound to me. And there's people that prefer that, you know, they, yeah, they prefer to pull up and drop anchor. And, and, right, <laughs> right, exactly. So. They don't need a shower that bad, right? <laughs> or, <laughs> so, you know, I guess I'll just add, you know, whatever. I mean, seriously, Katie's asking to spend hundred dollar items, two hundred dollar items, and and <clears throat> we just don't have the budget right now. Right. We we had the heating unit go out that cost us four grand, um, and we already started off. the The approved budget was a deficit budget to begin with. So, I there's so many things I want to do and say. Well, let's do this. I recommend we do that. And, Right. But we just, we've got to build up some funds to be able to do it. Um, I do think at a minimum we have to look at what can we do that doesn't cost money right now. And, right. and I think that is focus on the website, focus on getting that updated, using those images. And then, um, I, I don't know, then there's... Maybe Facebook posts. Um, all we got to do is get that to Kelly, and she she'll post stuff. But um, I think we 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 forget that that Facebook is reached by more than just people in in right. town, and right. so. Right. Right. Um, and I get it. I I understand from the city you can't have all these different messages out there. But if there is an exception to that rule, I think it would apply to the marina. Yeah, but I mean, we went through what two years ago. The police had a page, the fire marina, city hall, and it was how do you track content, right. how do you stay legal with all the law requirements for a municipality, and who's updating, and who's sure. commenting, and who's not. And so um, I, I think there was quite a bit of research, and it was decided to bring everything in one central Understood. location. Um, but we can still post marina events. Right, we can still use that page. For stuff, but <clears throat> I do think I mean I appreciate you coming. I appreciate all the information and the ideas because I do think that helps set a goal in our budgeting. And um, you know, we're in the budgeting process right now. So if we didn't have this information, sure, we would go a whole another year without even being able to address it or or try to. And I, I can send you this link when I get back to the office, so at least you have it. Okay. Um, and you know, if that's something you wanted to do direct or have Katie do, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily have to be involved directly in that, but I, I'd be happy, obviously, to provide you with assets or if you need something written or any support Kelly needs or anything like that.
So it also seems like um, the CVB, I think they they push out the pure manistee, mm -hmm. right? That's that's their branding. Mm -hmm. So it's not always about, you know, just come stay at the Days Inn. Mm -hmm. They promote all the attractions in the area. Um, and um, so I think if we shared some of our content with them, you know, she might be able to do, push out some posts that would help that as and well. And I believe they have um, like what's referred to as like an associate member, so that's open to people that aren't necessarily in the lodging business. The CVB does? Yeah, so I, I do believe that you can be an associate member of the CV. That's at least how it used to be. She also mentioned that they're contemplating a rebrand as well and really wanted to focus on the, on the waterfront. And the so I've got a completely separate meeting with her tomorrow afternoon, but um, I can ask her a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, and that's what, that's, I just, you know, I just wanted to get an initial contact and say, look, you know, the marina has never embarked on marketing and there would be no reason that we wouldn't want to collaborate. However, that, I don't know what that looks like, but it's a no-brainer to me to collaborate. I mean, if we can't be a you know, head and bed member, then there's got to be another way that we can be in front of it. But normally they would require that associate membership to open Um, I'm sure their materials are probably already printed for this year, but that, you know, they're again for next year working ahead and, you know, having a presence as, you know, the, the Manistee Marina has its own destination, I think is something you want to strive for. Probably four or five years ago in their visitor's guide, they did do an article about the marina in there, because I remember for whatever reason I, I was quoted in there and mm -hmm. um, it was a really cool article about it being the third gateway into the community mm -hmm. and um, so I'll, I'll have some conversations with her as well. Well and it might even be kind of cool you know to take that angle where you know the Great Loop angle. And Absolutely. We're, a, we're a, a destination you know a popular destination for Great Loopers mm -hmm. you know they can get everything they need here if they need repair they can get it here if they need fuel provisions wherever they need. Ride around on a scooter. <laughs> right. Well, and like we talked about, one of your strengths is it's walking distance. You've got this quaint little downtown that you can go explore, and you know maybe the resort with the bluefish is the best they ever had, and they're going to move back here because they want to eat at the bluefish. So, if money came available, and you have anything ready that we could. Well, what I would need to know is exactly what they would need. Yeah. Um, I don't have a finished edited video. I mean, you wouldn't just send somebody raw video. As far as putting together a portfolio of photos and a narrative, right. um, that's something I could do fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, it would, probably with some guidance from Jeff and Katie. Because they don't have usually time to get something No, and I don't, you know, that's the benefit of, none of, of it not being necessarily in a print publication, because if it's online, it can be published whenever it's, you know, you don't have to like start your membership in January. So, and again, you know, this seemed to be the most prominent um, of the organizations out there. It's a great, yeah, spot to street. If they're the most uh, common people coming here, I mean, you get a little bit of everybody. But... Right. Well, we're going to get those people anyway. They cross pollinate too. Yeah. So once they stop at the next marina, they're talking to other transients who aren't loopers and sharing that same experience. Well, and in general. Word of mouth is number one. Yeah. Learned that in college, and it hasn't changed even in the and social media is really word of mouth. It's just amplified, right? Right. Um, but again, those are all back to a lot of what you're already doing. You got good management, and you're you're minding your p's and q's, and people are getting treated like customers and feel like their business is appreciated. That's huge. There's no amount of marketing can, can do that. Do you have any other thoughts, Katie, um, from being down there every day? Well, and it, it's just having that two-way relationship, right. you know. And 
Well, we are we are listed in there. It's just not right. an advertisement. Right. So right now, other than word of mouth, the only way people are gonna get any additional information from us is if we post it on Facebook or our website. Right now, there's not that much out there. No. So I think that's where we need to start. And we're gonna have to start on a two string budget and build it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you got, you know, you recognize that you've got a challenge and now you gotta figure out how to do that. Yep. And, you know, if $10,000 buys you $10,000, $5,000 buys you $5,000, $50,000 buys you 50, you know, it's, it's all just scale to, you know, what we have to mm -hmm. Ultimately, the commodity that I would go out and buy are impressions. They're buying impressions, whether they're on a website, a radio station, impressions and you're right it, it has to start kind of as a grassroots and I don't know if there's some kind of cool little referral program you could start with people I don't know what you could offer but it might be kind of cool to maybe spread the word and, you know, if you're if they mention your name they get a free ice cream but I don't know I'm just thinking out loud but just a way to again create the perception that, man, that man of Steve was a great place. They were so welcoming. And we got a free ice cream cone. You know, that's what people remember. Little stuff. <laughs> Should we be, as a commission, recommending to the council that in next year's budget they earmark some uh, advertisement money for the marina? Well, it's, it's a common thing that we talk about with the Parks Commission, which we have two members here. And, um, you know, I've, I've said the more the commissions can advocate for their respective cause, the better it is. This one's a little tougher because it's an, the marina is an enterprise fund. And so the money that comes in is the money that goes out um, unless they added something else to it. Right. So um, it, it's, it's a little harder pull. Um, it certainly helps me because I'm responsible for managing that budget. It helps me to prioritize when there is money available, what the commission believes is the best. And right now that's marketing to, to grow it. Um, and then I also have to balance that with what the kind of our fixed operational costs are. And then what other things that, you know, that Katie thinks the facility needs. Um, so, and, and she's got lots of good ideas that I've, we just got to hold back until we can fund them. So, and the one distinction is the marina is the marina, but the, our marina is set in a city park. Mm -hmm. So the marina isn't paying for the park maintenance and the park upgrades. It benefits from that setting. Um, but we operate the maintenance and repair costs out of the parks budget for the grounds. Once you kind of cross the sidewalk and you're, and you've got your, you know, utility pedestals and the docks themselves and cleats and everything, then then we're definitely into the marina budget. So, and, and I just had a conversation with Katie last week or the week before that. We're gonna sit down and look at the current operating budget versus revenues and um, try to do a little forecasting to see if we're ahead or behind. Um, and that may, make, that may make change the decisions as we move in the next couple months, but um, I'm unable to see some of the information right now, so I've got to meet with the finance director to, to get access to some. How, how far out do people normally make their reservations? Is it, is it very a lot or is it right now, the month? Or... For the summer? <laughs> yeah, we had a few last season. And we our had, will start right now. Last season we had a little winter telephone glitch. Mm -hmm. We fixed that. Yes. yes. Have, have we seen any return of um, the seasonals? Um, I received a few calls for new seasonals already at the DPW office. Yeah, we haven't had any so, calls So we ought to start advertising that right now. We can do that locally. We can put an ad in the paper, seasonal slips available. I mean, because that covers, if we can get 10, 10 of those, that covers 
there's a lot of our fixed costs right out of the gate. I would do that sooner than later because if people are thinking of moving, they're thinking of moving now. Well, it feels like spring already. <laughs> I swear my grass is greener today. <laughs> I told Karen I'm not getting the lawn. <laughs> Once the sun comes out, yeah. Well, let's stay in touch. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And just, you know, let me know how I can assist with getting assets. And then if you decide that you want to move forward with this, with this uh, trade magazine. So right now is how much do we have in image, still images, and how much is in video? Well, it's the most of it is in video because I can take a still image from you can take a still. In video. So it was better just to run the drone all over. So we're going to need to. We're going to need to think through that and say, you know, we need one of the building, we need one of the docks, we need one over the head, overhead, and come up with a number of things that we can ask Mark to extract from that data then, and then be able to up, update the web page and do some ads in the paper. And yep. And I just need to know, okay, that at 323, I need, I want that as a still shot. Sure. And um, there's plenty. To work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well. All right, well. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to work with you folks. Thanks. Thank you. Take care of that law, Mark. Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we do need to work on the seasons. Yeah. Moving to the patio, marina patio next. So the update on the patio, we have um, we have the patio cleaned out. The patio area is cleaned out, it's graded. We rerouted a bunch of the storm piping and um, we have all the pavers at the city garage. Um, we just ran out of time in the fall, quite frankly. Um, but what we need to do is put some bedding stone down set the pavers, and then um, one of the things that's obviously on the wish list is patio furniture uh, to put out there. So we're still still trying to figure out how we can fund that. So there's quite a few demands on zero money. But we plan to do that right away this spring and have it ready for Memorial Day, so. And then updates on the breakwater project. So the contractor secured the breakwater um, in November and um, they plan to return the spring, probably in April, and feel that um, they should have the full project completed um, early June. What I, my understanding is they, the, the last major item they need to do, or two major items is to pour the, concrete cap on the breakwater and then um, reset some additional um, heavy armor stone along the inside and outside. So it should be clear by the time the tour season starts. On to reports and that's probably a few extras from the Harbor Master. Um, I don't think I have anything new to report on that. Uh, we do, one, one item that comes to mind, um, we applied, the city applied for a grant through the DNR Trust Fund to upgrade the Memorial Park, um, also known as the North River Walk. We, the first year that we applied, we were they, they base it on points. They score you on your application in a, in a whole um, whole list of criteria. And we were just, our points total was just below the funding line. Um, the next year, the city's parks, five-year parks plan had expired. And the parks plan was completed as part of a county-wide plan. So the entire county-wide five-year plan expired. The DNR would not allow the city to upgrade it on its own to stay compliant. So we had to wait until the county initiative went through their whole process. And you cannot apply for a DNR grant unless you have a current five-year plan. So we had to miss a year. 
in that year, if we would have applied for the grant, we would have been well within their funding range. Mm -hmm. So we applied again this year, well, in 22. And we, our score was higher. We were able to get it up to 310. However, the DNR took two thirds of the money available and shifted it to land acquisition as opposed to parks infrastructure. So they took most of the money away and didn't grant as many projects. Um, and so we missed the cut again. So we plan, plan to apply again next year. And we have already asked city council to up our match. Right now we've got a 47% local match. We've asked them, we've asked council to consider upping that to a 50-50 match where we can get a few more points. But a key, a key component of points that we don't score well on is access to, um, I can't remember the term, but it, essentially it's um, some of the state's key na natural resources, like Michigan as an example. So because right now it is a river walk, it is walking paths, it's a park, it's got a fishing pier, but that doesn't get you to Lake Michigan. So we've started some internal discussions on can we make a, a dock that at least a boat could tie up to, or could we make it so that a kayak, kayak could tie up or launch from there and be able to get up and have access to um, you know, the downtown and, and eating and stuff. But that small component could score us a bunch more points, which could upgrade that park. You get, that's probably the first you've heard about it because we just started, to, we had a meeting on it um, Friday. So um, that's one item that we're looking at. So and I, go ahead. Closer to Lake Michigan? As opposed to the launch ramp? And well, it's access to the Great Lakes. So if we can make that park have accessibility to the Great Lakes, we may be able to get more points for it. And to get the state grants, points are the name of the game. And you also get a crap load of points if you're in Southeast Michigan, which obviously we're not. All the oil that funds that comes from Northern Michigan, but you get bonus points from being from Southeast Michigan. Um, other than that, I'm sort of a dangerous place to launch kayaks or canoes. You immediately deep water yep. and traffic. Yep. Well, I know the Harbor Commission in the past has talked about a, a, a place to tie up, you know, just a, a shopper's dock kind of thing. And um, I don't think it's a good place for, for a launch. First of all, you've got a 50 foot elevation change from just from the decking that's there along the river to the parking lot. And we are planning to build a, uh, an accessible walkway or pathway down to it. Um, but that doesn't mean you're gonna wanna drag a kayak all the way down. <coughs> so we're exploring options. Um, I think that's it for Harbor Master. And the city manager was unable to attend today. We had a conflict. So. Um, one of the things that the city, I'm sorry, but one of the things that, that the city manager usually updates on is the boat launch revenues. And again, the boat launch is a, another enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. um, I think a couple months ago we talked about we had record revenues there. The news advocate picked it up, but it did a big story. But we also had some internal conversations about, um, about those launches and their condition and so forth. Um, right now, the pay station at First Street is operating is functioning very well we had some signage that got damaged and we replaced that so it cleared up some issues um, the the biggest and the other thing about that machine is that it's module the components are modular so if something fails we can just buy a component you know if the card reel reader fails we can pull it out plug a new one in the, the you know coin exchanger things like that so um, we just we made an eternal decision to continue that way. Um, the, the biggest complaint that we have is if you go there and you buy a seasonal pass, 
and you pay your money, you get a, you get a piece of paper out, then you gotta go exchange the paper for an actual sticker. So that's available at City Hall, but it's also available at the City Marina mm -hmm. oh. because the Marina has extended hours. And so we've explained that um, better on the signage that's down there. But that seems to be the biggest complaint yeah, that we get. That's it, that's all. Food business would be our suggestions for the Marina from Kelly Grieve and Liz Lesky. Um, I'm Kelly Grevy. Hi, I'm Liz Lasky. And we are Parks Commissioners. Um, as you stated previously, the Municipal Marina is a park. I, I apologize for reading off of this. I don't want to leave anything out. Um, and we know that the Marina, or is the Marina, operating in the red. That's what we were told. Is that correct? It operates at a... It operates in a deficit position due to the debt on the building. Okay. All right. Well, we think we can help. Um, we believe beautification, cleanliness, and the comforts of home have a direct impact on the marina's occupancy. We would like to propose some ideas to you that we believe would have a positive impact on that occupancy rate. Uh, the city marina is in the hospitality business. The boaters want to feel like it's their home away from home, and they want to feel pampered. We believe the clubhouse and the grounds needs to offer all the amenities of home. Boaters want a comfortable place to get off their boat, to get out of the rain, and they want it to be comfortable. Let's start with a welcome mat to wipe their shoes before entering the clubhouse, then a place to get some office work done, take a hot shower, do their laundry, play a board game or a card game with family and friends, cover up with a blanket on the couch and watch a movie, have a cup of warm tea and read a good book or look at the local newspaper, eat a breakfast that was kindly made for them, and a place to conjugate with other boaters for happy hour. Uh, they need transportation to area businesses like grocery stores and restaurants. They also want grounds that are clean, beautiful, and safe. The routine maintenance of clean and freshly painted benches, tables and swings, edged walkways, pressure washed sidewalks, trim trees for the view, beautiful flowers and plants, and all of the outdoor lighting to be in good working order. There should be a decorative garbage receptacle near every boat, uh, patio lights strong for the ambiance, and music piped outdoors that is peaceful and relaxing. They want a place to be able to grill and dine outside and to sit and relax by an open fire. Our guests want to walk to the stores and good restaurants and walk and bike to the beach. They want to be noticed and taken care of by their hosts. We, the Parks Commission, feel we can help. We would like to collaborate with you, the Harbor Commission, and we would like to add four club chairs and a coffee table for a conversation game area within the clubhouse. We would like to serve a continental breakfast of muffins and fruit and hot coffee, compliments of our downtown merchants, have a plate of cookies and the option of coffee or tea in the middle of the after afternoon. We would also like to encourage a happy hour with a charcuterie board, perhaps, compliments of our downtown restaurants, and BYOB for the boaters to be able to conjugate and talk about their voyage with one another, and a comfortable setting of fresh flowers, candy in a dish on the table, and the warmth of lamp lighting on at all times, which will reassure our guests that we care. And what about some retail? Um, I don't know if you've thought about retail at all, but this could be a place where they could be able to purchase essential toiletries, the 1 a.m. snacks, boater toilet paper, t-shirts, and sweatshirts from their favorite marina. And this would add another revenue stream for the city marina. And the healthier options like non-toxic laundry soap and healthier beverages and snacks should obviously be, be something that we offer. And of course, comparable gas prices. All of this matters for a wonderful stay. It's the little things and extra things that they will talk about and share with the loopers that are behind them. Um, they will return to Manistee for years to come. Um, we will have a one-up on any other marina on the lakeshore. And we, uh, Liz and I have gone through the marina um, clubhouse, upstairs and downstairs, and we have an idea of what would make it the feel that we just talked about. And including two bikes, baskets, we estimate that purchase to be $9,040. We know you 
don't have the money, but we do have creative funding in mind that we'd like to talk to you about. So what would you like to add to that, Liz? Well, I think Kelly <laughs> covered it pretty completely, but I think some of that is actually things that we could do with no or low cost. I know some of that, like, you're not going to do all of it. Some of it needs to be done. It is a revenue generator, like we've all said. And we've got to make some changes because we want to come here, like it, and come back. Um, some of the things, just for an example, that could be done immediately. You know, you got two big bulletin boards down there, one with nothing on it, one with, I think, one or two sheets of paper on it. And then there's the map, and that's fine. But um, like those big bulletin boards, I just happened to run into Eileen Postma at Myers, and she does those graphic uh, boats of the river. They're beautiful prints. She sells them for anywhere from $600 to $1,000. So is there any way, if we even put a little card in the corner, you know, they do that, the blue fish, they do it all over. Could you display the, she goes, Liz, I would love that. That would be, you know, that'd be perfect. And I thought, you know, we got a couple little prints down there, but that doesn't look homey or nice. And we do have a coffee pot, but just like a glass with, you know, you know when you go into a nice motel, you know, they always offer you a warm chocolate chip cookie, and, you know, they give you something, a bowl of apples. Doesn't mean you always take it, but it looks nice. The fresh flowers are so simple, those could be free. So I thought some of this stuff, but the furniture layout, those club chairs, we got two TVs in there, which, you know, that's like at the medical care when four in a room, they're all watching a different channel. So I'm thinking, well, I don't know how that works, you know. But um, one has the couch area, then there's a nice game table, there's a beautiful child <coughs> table in there. And um, we just thought four club chairs would look, change that whole thing. You could sit there, have a drink there, you could have a cup of coffee there, you could lay out your charts on there, whatever. I thought that would be a real plus. And then, of course, Jeff talked about, and we saw the old one, but the new patio furniture, no one sat on that one. We spent a lot of time at that river walk. They kind of lined those chairs up, and partially it's because of the mud, but they lined the chairs up at that table. You know, boaters like to eat outside because the other option is their boat or whatever. And that table has to be replaced, and we have to get going on that. But I think we could do it without, and we're just not trying to do anything. But just a little collaboration that I think we could do it. We do a lot of things free. <laughs> I think we could get a lot of things done without too much, too much cost to the city or to the to your budget. So the training. Yeah, one thing we mentioned, and you know, I had wait back in the day, and it's. When you, in Manistee, the Glenwood, those people are trained. And it doesn't matter who waits on you, they are trained. And I thought, we've got to train. And I think right now, it doesn't matter what your business is, it's kind of like, we're just lucky they showed up. And the, we're reflecting that attitude. Well, we're just lucky they showed up. They don't have to, you know, hand me a rope. Well, it's actually a line. And you should run to that boat. You don't want them to hit the dock. Get those kids out there energetic. And I don't think the kids realize it is hospitality, it is like being a waiter or waitress, whatever it is. Those people tip generously if they are treated well, especially when they arrive. They hand a kid 20 bucks, they know that the kid's gonna be, what else do you need, Mr. So-and-so? You know, just little things, memorizing the name. We, we spoke with that one seasonal last year and he goes, those kids, I, I, he said he was the only seasonal, so I don't know how many seasonals you get. That was the man that lived over in Shipwatch. He goes, I've been here, the only seasonal, they never call me by name. And he said, I don't use the facilities here because I live, and that's when he pointed over whether it was Shipwatch or wherever. I live over there, but um, needed a place to tie up his bow because I think he usually had kept it at Jeff's Paints. He said, if I would just be greeted by name by once, and I thought, well, that's a no-brainer, you know. So just little things. I thought we can work on that. And I even thought of asking Donna from the Glenwood if she would come help train her people. Her manual's this thick. We don't need her manual or to look at it. But what are the basics in training for, and if you told those kids tips, and we know kids, Jeff, you work down there. Did they tip you when, you know, when you're hustling? They didn't. Okay. My How husband, back then? My husband got tipped all the time. Yeah, who said that, that they invited someone to their wedding and it was the biggest wedding gift they got. Yeah. It was from one of the boaters that they met on there. And I know that from waitressing at the, you did anything for them other than waitressing and I, back in the day, 
had waitress at Coral Gables, and you got a lot of boaters. And if you just ran and got them something that they needed, I worked at the desk too, they would hand you money back then. Like, and I thought, especially nowadays, people like to see people hustle. You know, if you're, if, if a kid's down there working, so anyways. And we did talk to the lookers when we were down there working, and they did, they did tell us what they were looking for and what would make their, their stay more pleasurable. And they also said that they told the loopers behind them where to stay. <clears throat> and if our marina is where they think, you know, where they get all of these sorts of things and feel comfortable, they're going to tell their friends behind them. And the building's beautiful. I mean, we're blessed to have that building, the bathrooms, that teal in there, and it's, I thought, we've got so much to work with. It's not like we're rehabbing some derelict place. I mean, that building... Um, and grounds. And grounds makes Manistee look, look great. And they say that, but they're, they're not saying, oh, they, we do the extra, the extra mile. We can do better. So... We just want to up the bar. Yeah. The idea is what will be the next step to get everybody to work together so we can make this happen. Well, we're ready to go to work today. Yeah. Whatever you want us to do, we'll do. <laughs> yeah. It's all volunteer work that you guys do, or you're not paid? Yes. Yeah. No, we're not paid. <laughs> no. no, not paid, no tips. But, um, you know, we could start with just say the paintings on the wall. We could check the alternative sources for getting some of this furniture, and it has to be new and decent. You know, um, looked at the books. You know, an example was I was in a group. I had a meeting uh, last night, and I just put out a memo. There was 18 women. I said we need current, good, good New York Times best-selling hardcover books and some non-dog-eared paperbacks that are in still good, good, good condition. They came in with backloads. Another one says, I have games. And Lynn says, I have puzzles. You know, you might have to count the pieces that don't give us a ton. We want all the pieces there, but I think that they would remain there. And like on the book deal, you know, take a book. Help yourself, take the book on your journey. If you have a book that you've already read, leave it. You know, uh, that game for children. There's, you know, a deck of cards and go to the dollar store, get some fish, get some Uno cards, whatever. And someone else said, oh, I had games. I was gonna give them to Goodwill. They're brand new. We'll take them. You can put them on the shelf. So just little things like that. We can start with free things, but we do need furniture. We do need <coughs> your blessing. <laughs> so a little bit of background. Um, I work with them all the time. Mm -hmm. and I'm so happy to. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So we, were, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago, and then we had another online meeting a little later, and so we just <laughs> filled the, the gap with all these just ideas and talks and and stuff and so when they started talking a lot about the marina yeah. I said well don't forget we have a Harbor Commission we have a Parks Commission and you're kind of crossing into their domain and and I said and you know Katie is the marina manager so she's responsible for the day-to-day -day. Katie <laughs> um, as the harbor master I'm responsible for the marina budget and the overall operation and reporting to the Harbor Commission but and then the Harbor Commission's got an overall kind of view and perspective and suggestions just like the Parks Commission does. So um, they sat down with Katie last week and talked about these ideas and um, some, of them, some of the things that they discussed she's already had in her mind or planned and some were waiting on some funding for. Others were, were some new things. But then out of respect they came to you to kind of say, we've got some ideas, we want to help, we don't want to step on people's toes. So that's kind of where we're at, right? And we did go to the Leland Marina and talk to them about how they've done things because they, they as Jeff knows, they upgraded. And there was a point in time where they couldn't dredge and the marina was closed and the, um, the downtown merchants rallied together and did a fundraiser and they made the money for the marina to be able to open back up because they understood the impact that a full marina makes on their businesses. Yes. So I have talked to some of the merchants and I'm getting good good responses from them, good feedback. And, and I am on the DDA and I want to bring it up there too to see if the DDA would help um, with funding some of this as well. Like the furniture funding. And it was interesting because you're talking to Sammy. Some of the people we talked to 
when they come here, and I think it's because it's in, you know, it's relatively easy to drive to. The one had people coming from New York. A lot of them have families that when they're down there boating, their families drive here to visit. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. So they're staying somewhere. So I thought it's the impact to the town is huge. When, when you mentioned the artwork, um, that would be for sale. Well, yeah, I think she'd just put a price on it. Mean, I think she'd do some even without the, yeah, she'd be for sale. They're print. She goes, well, it's not a big deal. And I said, you know, it's locked. It's boaters only. What if someone stole one or something? She goes, Liz, they're prints. I, I'd have to investigate that, but it, I think what would be more appropriate would be like if she donated a couple prints, but then had a sign saying, visit my website or my Facebook page or something for I doubt she'd do that because that's, you know, you're asking her at, to donate. Well, I don't know how we could no. sell other people's merchandise. They, you, we wouldn't sell. No. It. She'd have a card. Just it might even not have a price on it. Just say, you know, contact me. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> so even if she loaned them, to she'd the loan them, and it would not. It's like at the Bluefish Goodies had it all over town. She just she doesn't put a price on it. They call. I mean, you know, a boater isn't gonna. Take yeah, it back I, to the I don't want. Product. I don't think we, we ship it. We don't want to have any transfer of money. Sale for that. No. I yeah, talk to her more, but I don't, she, we would definitely not consummate the sales, and she didn't expect that. Yeah, even even the hospital does that too. Yes, they do. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just to get the artist's name out and stuff, and her name is out. I think she was doing it more to help the city. And there are probably that's other, just an example. There yeah, are probably Chris, other Chris, artists that would be Chris Van well. There's others too, but she's excellent, and they're they're very classy. They fit the marina. They're just homey and nice. It's it'd be something different. That's something Katie can work through. I thought it's well, I, wonderful. I mean, that's that's a huge attraction is just customer service yes and to just do those simple things does everything have to be bought brand new or can you do like a wish list where somebody's like getting rid of their furniture and instead of donating it they would it would fit into the landscape of that building or you know I mean is that possible to do we certainly can accept donations you know. it, it gets a little uncomfortable yeah. for me to buy something from your backyard and it's hard to say no you know it's like oh this is oh yeah we'll take the table and you go out there so, okay. but like there one idea was like those tvs are mounted and they're crooked underneath and there's yeah. like six cords hanging down and a dvd and all this stuff you know the one could be you know they're kind of even high like if someone had a, a a council and you put out the size and the specs you know and then you have a right to say no at that point but it, it's got to be in good we want to up it so it's got to be in good taste it can't look like our yeah, garage because because the firm i work for designed that building and so the lower portion is really designed into two different lounges the one on the east side is for the children and then the larger one is for adults, obviously. But that facility's been there for 15 years now, so and I don't think it's been updated much. Thank you. When I heard your description, Say well, well, I, I When I heard your description, I thought, yeah. I want to visit that marina. Well, yeah. it's <laughs> right. between us, yeah, will be, I don't know, and it's pretty, or... I mean, it's kind of sad, but bulletin boards, either you use them or you take them down. Exactly. And they're kind of outdated a little right. bit. And We're not going to be the main focus. Right. And yeah. Most being a voter, I'm, I'm not looking to, No. You know, maybe the brochure, to know where I'm at, a map, to know mm -hmm. how to navigate around Manistee, but um, I think just cleaning it up to make it homey, like you said, with low lighting or whatever. Do they need permission to go in there and start like doing all that? From no. us or from they us? don't have access. They don't, mm -hmm. okay. Mickey so, let them in. Who grants the permission? Though? We found out. 
there are cameras in there. We knew we were being watched. <laughs> <laughs> well, res respectfully, that's right. No, that's Katie's ultimate decision on, right. on what happens inside. How do you feel about that, Katie? Are you on board with that, yeah. or does it make you like too much um, on your I plate? Know Which oh. they look better with everything <laughs> down than this. And the other thing <laughs> is, all, 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 all the work that meant, to, yeah, so any I mean, disrespect to that, that, but the it's. The TVs have like glass shelves with VCRs and yeah, so they're and so, out of date. But you would need a piece of furniture to set those yeah, TVs like on. Nice until console. then, I would leave them where they're at. So <clears> Does one of those TVs post the weather continuously? Not, right now, Not anymore. Time. I think that could be free. I think you'd have to get someone. You, I could call and get. You're in charge this week. They got to last, and all you do is one person does it one week. Yeah. I think we could get those flowers just. We make coffee every morning. I mean, there's like a, there's a nice little setup there. I don't know if voters are looking for a full meal, but I think it would be nice. And the flowers are great. Liz brought in some hydrangeas. Those are beautiful. Yeah. We were thinking. How would you even do that? You, I don't even know. Yeah. On a daily basis, you don't have any idea how many people are going to be there. You just have to put it out. If you ran out, you know, you wouldn't say that in your thing. Like sometimes the unexpected is what is nice. You know, when you walk in, they don't. It, you're not saying we're going to give you free continental breakfast because that. But if you just had bananas and apples in a in a nice bowl right there on that little counter, and you had the coffee, and then under a thing, and some muffins or, or cookies or something, and you could get them, and then when you ran out, you ran out. And, if you, and we want to incorporate the restaurants with this, so it's not something Katie has to do. Just like at the Vogue, they have fresh flowers brought in all the time by Stacy's, or I can't remember. But they would just bring them in Vogue when you know they came. And that's been for years, like right. five years in the restroom. They have right. a neat little bouquet, and it looks gorgeous. People comment on that. Like, wow. we, we don't want to add to her plate. No. We, we want to make it easy. <laughs> the side, yeah, when we travel and we stop at the uh, rest, areas. rest areas, and we're like, oh, we're coming back to this restroom. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and there's a little book that you can write comments. There are and shit I've ever seen. It's like, wow. Yes. So we purposely hold everything till we get there because that's yes. all about hospitality. And that's the but same. I don't want it to end up where you're having to worry about all no. of that. So no, we, neither do we. We don't either. either. We will no, we right, will not do that. But I don't think it would be the reason not to at least give it a shot yes. and see what happens. I mean, nothing, we're starting at ground level especially with you just starting in manistee you know it's kind of like you can start fresh again sort of now that we're out of the pandemic and we're kind of like i i was brought up with customer service i mean you just roll out the carpet exactly but, yes so i'm on board but again i i've been in your position where you're just like oh you know because you're the one that no i'm fine though even a lot of this Mark and I have already discussed a lot of the cracks in the wall, holes in the wall, painting, you know, the upper is already kind of in the works. Um, We're just supposed to be in the Yeah, but like, so. yeah. 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 We, I, I, we can't underestimate the impact of those youthful people bounding out onto the dock and greeting. And, exactly. And One being helpful about, with a big smile. Yes. One thing I wondered about. Or do you have one gas grill for the boaters back in their area? Because boaters don't always carry charcoal, no. you know, and lighter fluid. They put their garbage in there and the cigarette butts. Yeah. So yeah. Out, really? So. And yeah, I don't know that you want local people down there grilling with the boaters. I mean, that should be separate. Most marinas are very, most marinas are much more separated than we are. You know, that you, 
Um, being a boater, that's kind of the last thing you want to do, folk, you know, in a way to get off. And then, so I mean, I don't know if the grills, you know, if you have maybe just one available, I, I don't know. Could we? I guess that would be a good question. Are you doing like a question, like a thing to pass to uh, the boaters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just but there the, are comment cards in there. Yeah. We did. You, you have comment emails. cards down there. They do, but they don't fill them out. I mean, you know. they're trying to get boaters to fill out. Well, maybe the location. They're back on that shelf. We didn't find them. If they fill it out. <laughs> yeah. Put them next to the... And we hand it off to people, and they still don't. They don't want to take the time to fill out. I mean, they just don't. You know, they, they get off the boat, and they go to the first TJ's Club. They find for I'm I'm okay with you guys assisting, yeah. Yeah. I won't put a blanket on everything, but I I think that um, yeah I think that they've they can work with Kelly and make suggestions and make improvements and um, so I'm in support of that. Kelly or Katie? I'm sorry, Katie. Okay. <laughs> Kelly's going oh, no. <laughs> Another Kelly, did you want to volunteer to assist as well? Yeah, she's got. She's gonna do breakfast. <laughs> so we. We need something official. I don't think. I don't think it needs a formal motion. Just kind of consent and and I. I'd like to thank them for coming and absolutely. And then we'll keep you informed because it, we're all on the same team at the end of the day. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's your yeah. It's, we all live here. It's yeah. it's, it's all. Our, and there's no personal gain, so nope. So we'll keep you all informed and um, yeah, especially if you're taking that. Katie can do her job without worrying about the welcoming area or whatever, you know, as long as I think it wouldn't be fair to you to have it all become your responsibility. But I, I, I truly believe in the training of, of the high school kids who are doing the greeting. It's, I think that's so it is. important. Well, no. that's like and I know you talked about it. Is number two. I mean, so you have to have, oh, I have to say that. Like, okay. Really, it is. Well, quite frankly, one of the reasons. Oh yes, they do. They are. They are clean. They are. Come back if it's clean. I mean, yes. That's what one of the reasons why I appointed Katie as the manager is because she has many years' experience working at marinas and a campground, and that hospitality right. is. When we interviewed her, we started asking. But you about can't that leave. Background. You can't go anywhere. This is a and, stepping stone. <laughs> but that was a huge, huge priority for her. Right. So she's been there for one year. It takes a year to understand the business, Absolutely. but it takes those young people a couple of years of returning and understanding and maturing and growing. And, right. um, and so I think you ended up doing pretty well with the staff last year, and I think it's improved from even previous years. But um, I, we noticed it too, even the summer help that we hired in the parks. The first year, um, they do the work, but then the next year they take a little more ownership. By the third year, they want to be the crew leader and set the example. And so um, I hope that's the trend that we get going down there. And we're also trying to um, provide the opportunities for those employees to do more work, more on, you know, hands-on work at that site. So we're looking for opportunities there too. Because the boaters noticed that. We were down there with Manistee Proud and we were doing this stuff. The one comment came out, oh, you know, they could tell our age that <laughs> we were probably volunteers. And they go, why are you doing that with the kids sitting there? And I thought, well, you know, I said, oh, it's okay, we're volunteers, we want to make it better or whatever we said, I don't remember. But they questioned that, you know, I thought the boaters are just sitting there and they notice, you know, let's get these kids working. So anyways. And, and you're not just doing the city a sense of a, a favor. You're, if you can instill public service, not public service, but customer service 
into these kids lasts a lifetime. Yes, it does. That was a lot of years. Yes, yes. Good point, Tom. That's it. Mm -hmm. So what is the procedure you would like us to, I mean, we're rare to go, so we just need to know from you how do we, what's the Work through Katie. Okay. Just call Katie with whatever. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if she gets to some place she's not sure about budget or scope or whatever, then her and I can collaborate on that. Can we pursue a budget? Can we pursue getting money from other avenues? I want to say yes, but I think I think we've gotten council approval before we go do any solicitations. Just like on a parks project, we get their approval before we can apply for a grant. So I'd have to understand more of what you mean there. Like, how do you how do you plan to fund some of this stuff? If it's finding a local business that would provide complimentary bananas, I think that's fine. So but if we're if we're trying to seek money for a, a, something in the in the city property, then I think that needs formal approval. I proposed a, I met with Florissons Landscaping, I proposed an $11,000 landscape project within the city marina, and it was passed by the DDA, and the DDA is paying for it. At the marina? Yes. Or along the river walk? No, at the marina, on the top level. I wanted all three levels, but we couldn't afford that, so they afforded the top level. I don't think you were at that meeting. I don't think I've seen anything about this. Yeah. Yep, it's, we're, we're going to be the first ones in the spring. What's the name of that park? Marina Park? <laughs> Marina Park. Yes. Maybe it needs a name. <laughs> See, this is, this is where it gets tricky. The DDA approved an upgrade to a city park. Well, it's part park, of the DDA. But it's, it, it's in the DDA district, but it's a city park. Well, Bill was there. Bill was present. I mean, it's, it's nothing that he doesn't know. Are you worried because it could be a lawsuit or some kind of, or what is, what is that concern? There, there are so many groups in this community oh. and when we do, when somebody does something that bridges multiple areas, okay. I get concerned that one group is going to be upset that the other group didn't know and it always ends up being Jeff's fault, yes. Wait, I yeah, I don't it's an improvement that the yeah. DDA funded. What, why would anybody be upset about that? It's in the city park, though. Yeah, but and Did that go through the parks commission and in the downtown district. Did that go through the parks commission? No, it went to the DA. Didn't go through the parks department. So that's what I'm saying. I, I just like tonight. Tonight, there's a leadership group from the chamber that is going to present a concept to city council for their approval. And in the staff meeting today, I said I wish they would have gone to the parks commission first because. The parks are going to hear about it in the paper, or read about it in the paper, and then they're going to have a meeting Thursday night, and they're not going to have any information. And then you're going to wonder why I didn't update you on that. So I have to keep everybody updated, everybody on the same same level. But I think the Parks Commission would be happy that there's going to be an upgrade in one of their parks paid for by somebody else. Am I missing the point? That, that's a fair assumption. seems like nothing can ever move forward in Manistee because there's people that get their nose bent on a joint because it, it's not fair or what I don't know why I, I guess I'm, the politics of it is so strong that we're never going to really get ahead on anything uh, for, for me it, I, I don't think it prevents it I think it's just making sure everybody's informed and and aware. Well, they were informed because I'm on the Parks Commission. So mm -hmm. they knew about it. They were happy about it. Do you mean it needed to be formally? They, need to, they needed to be... Well, the, 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 <laughs> we can have that discussion. Okay. I think, though, we do want to make sure that everybody, I think, wants to raise the bar, make it better, and get something done. I think we can't let... And I know if you have every... but. I, like landscaping was a professional 
you had Larson's. You know, right. They were. Yeah. It's not like it's um, Joe with his mower trying to do it and plant a couple bushes. So although we've got some good volunteer gardeners though too. <laughs> well, you, you did such tremendous work on that park last year, and it really cleaned it up, and it shows. And to take it the next step and you know beautify the arena, I think would be great. A lot of that stuff is still overgrown and needs to be brought up um, high. A lot of the vegetation, the, some hedges are no longer hedges, they're, right. they're immense. And uh, I think they're gone beyond where you can cut them back because they'd just be stubble, I'm afraid. And the other thing was going to the merchants and asking them if they would want to rally and get this accomplished because it would be a benefit in the end. And like I said, I have gotten good feedback already. I would say whatever it takes to get everything going, whether whatever parties need to uh, work together. Thank you very much. You. We'll keep you informed and might ask for your help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm still Thank you. To have Katie call me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we have to do an annual review of the bylaws. And that was included in the packet that I sent. So, and then it's the packet in front of you. So mm -hmm. The review of the strategic plan and then the <coughs> member roster. There's a strikeout under section four. Was that strikeout previously for the uh, annual meeting or the first calendar meeting? Was that strikeout before or was that proposed for us to consider? Where are we talking about? Uh, section four under office, officers. In the strategic plan or in the bylaws? Bylaws, sorry. Um, then no, I don't think it was anything for you to. I mean, I think the strikeout's appropriate in case we didn't have a meeting in January, but Just to whatever the next I read through them. I don't have any suggested changes. We could take out in January. I don't think it would make any difference either. So just the first meeting of the year. So it appears that that was struck out prior. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need a motion on each one of these to approve them? Or? We do, yep. Uh, we'll make a motion to approve the annual review of the bylaws and the way they are. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Then we'll need an annual review of our strategic plan. Most of it's pretty consistent. Um, on page three, under issues, the third bullet is maintenance of the docks, which I think mm -hmm. we've eliminated that issue by replacing mm. the facilities. I mean, some of the other issues are the same ones that we've been discussing with the marketing challenges and uh, but one of the opportunities I think we could add as a bullet point would be what we talked about today is marketing to the loopers yep mm -hmm. where would you like to add it I'm sorry 
Uh, page three under opportunities. Okay. The last section. You take advantage of. And in the section before that bullet point three, did you get that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That can be eliminated. pretty consistent, mm -hmm. make it profitable. Okay. Need to make a motion. Any other proposed changes, updates? I don't think so. I think everything would be consistent with what we're trying to do. Then I'll make a motion that we approve the, um, what's it called officially? Strategic plan. Strategic plan. This, the Harbor Commission strategic plan with the noted revisions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. This is the updated roster. We just need to check that over and make sure all the information is correct. Is that what we need to do? Yeah, and if it's fine, we don't really need a motion. We'll just, okay. no action will be taken. So as long as it's okay. With the revisions of chair, vice chair. Oh, oh right, 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 yeah. <laughs> Making sure, right? And, and we assume that the new, ch the new chair appointed Kelly McCall as the recording secretary. <laughs> Feel free to change it does up. Does a great job of that. Yeah, she does. We still have two vacancies. I did mention it to these gals here. Yeah. Vacancies. No. Uh, then we can move on to public comments, which I don't see many other than what we've had. So that project I mentioned, that's going to city council. What the chamber's leadership group is, is their proposed project this year is to raise funds and place a, uh, a station at one of the beaches that has life jackets of various sizes for a on your honor borrow and replace kind of system. So if you come down to the beach and you want to go swimming, you can borrow a life jacket and when you're done, return it. So you got updated too. And what, where's the funding for that? They would raise funds for it. So um, they're going before city council to get permission to raise funds for it and then to implement it when it's constructed or when it's fundable. Would that fall on the uh, concessioners to move in and lock up at the end of the day? Or? The city manager last week at staff meeting uh, mentioned, well, we saw it, it was on the agenda. So we had a discussion about it, and then he sent us uh, the limited information we got from the leadership group. So I'll have more information hopefully after tonight's meeting. So will it? those increase as the year goes on, if it's looking like they're being used more and more, let's say I have <coughs> my grandkids and they're all gone. I'm, I don't live here in town. So it's a first come first serve type thing, but if, if it seems like they're. I don't have any details on it, but I yeah. assume that's what it would be. Okay. And I would assume that people may donate a life jacket or something to supplement what's there. I don't know how big the station will be or what kind of rack they would be put on. Nice. Didn't you guys talk about something like that at the Parks Commission? I don't remember that. No? I thought we talked about on the pier or something. I think more of the toss rings at one point. So then you don't want to have to get there. It's all Is that 
you could possibly get points yeah. if the park has access. So it would be the park over here. Oh, okay. Next to the bridge. Right. So right now, you can enjoy that park, right, right, right. but all you can do is all you can do is dip your line in. You can't physically get to the water, so you can't physically get to Lake Michigan. If there was a landing or something that allowed you to tie up with a boat and run up to the brewery or downtown, then you've got a link by boat. And that's that was just a concept thrown out in a meeting. But it's one of those things where I like to try to keep everybody informed because these conversations happen every day and all of a sudden something gets printed in the paper and then somebody's like, well, why didn't I know about that? And why didn't you update me on that? And so. They plan on doing upgrading down there. Do they have any plans to do anything like that or no? For that uh, North River Walk? Yeah. Right now it's a $550,000 upgrade to that facility. But it doesn't have anything but fishing access. You should probably have to use pilings or something to make a dock. But you have a plan and you have a match, but you don't have funding for that yet, correct? I, I don't have the grant. Okay. So we're 300000 short. It's a need. <laughs> It's a med the lower uh, wooden, the elevated wooden portions are closed off because they're yeah. deteriorated so bad. Yeah. And just like Tom was explaining at the marina, those facilities were built almost at the same time. Oh, yeah. So all that landscape in there is 50 years old. And yeah, it's, it's wild. Way, way overgrown. Mm -hmm. that I can think of. We can make a motion to adjourn that. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. Aye.